Hey, Sir Fix a Lot here. I've got a 2003 Honda S2000 and I've got some engine noises uh, that recently popped up. I just picked up this car. Um, it was actually already making those noises. Um, the previous owner said that um, there was a kind of a loud ticking noise that kind of started up at idle. Um, it's, it's more apparent at idle than at higher RPMs. So it you know since the um, the noise doesn't follow RPMs generally and uh, you know there's not heavy clunking at the bottom end of the engine, I'm thinking that this might be a timing chain. But I'll go ahead and start it up and let you listen. So you can hear the clacking noise. So you can hear that it wasn't a constant knock. It was kind of like, you know, the chain uh, slapping in here. Uh, most of the noise was coming up here. Um, didn't hear it at the bottom end. And again, it doesn't follow um, the RPMs as they go up. Also, uh, you know, things like VTEC and things like that, they, they still operate fine. The car accelerates well. It just, um, you know, it has, it, it reads misfire. Um, on all four cylinders when you put it up uh, on the scanner and um, you know what I'll do is I'm going to take off the uh, valve cover here and show you how you can tell that the uh, chain might be stretched. The previous owner did try to put in a timing chain tensioner. Uh, there's a new one on, in here but um, the previous owner reported that it didn't actually help. So um, this leads me to believe that the chain is probably um, stretched beyond um, specs. And uh, this vehicle has, I think this engine has about um, 80,000 on it since it was replaced. So typically when these cars, or when these engines come in from Japan um, or are imported, you know, they've probably got like 40 or 50,000 miles on them already. Okay, I apologize for the handheld. The uh, valve cover is off and I've got it at top dead center. These two marks here are straight across and then also the mark here and mark here are level with the plane of this um, of the block, okay, or the head, sorry. Um, and the way you can tell that this timing chain might be stretched a little too much even though we've got the TCT a new one in there you know it kind of feels tight here but the revealing part is down here um, when you look at the let's see if I can get a, a light on this so if you look at the mark, um, the white mark that is on the pulley, it is a head of the point on the block. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a head of that point by probably a half inch to, yeah, just a, about a half inch. So that's how you can tell that the pulley is overcompensating. Uh, for the stretched chain. So, you know, when the chain is not stretched, that white mark should be right on um, that that triangle point um, of the of the block, okay? And basically what it's doing is you know, this chain is too this chain is too long, so that pulley is is over rotating down there in order to make all of these light up here. So that's how you can tell the chain is out of spec. Alright, I just removed the valve cover and 
I've got the cams lined up here, two marks, a top dead center straight across here, and then on the um, timing chain sprocket, there are two marks, one here and one here, and they have to be level with this with the plane of the head here. And those will line up. Um, I'm gonna briefly talk about the setup and why I think the chain might be stretched. So let's see, let's look at this real quick. Let's see if I can zero in on this. All right, so the way this is the front of the engine and the way the this is the timing chain that runs, um, your uh, timing chain tensioner pushes on this end. So on the left side here, it pushes in this way and it tensions this side of the chain. But this side of the chain, the right side here, facing front, um, is basic, there's, there's no chain tensioner there. That just runs straight down. Um, to you know basically to the to the crank um, crank pulley right and so if this if the overall chain is stretched out um, you're not going to be able to compensate it with the ch timing chain tensioner on the on this side on the left side you can all you know what, what's going to happen is this crank pulley down here is going to have to rotate over rotate in order to make all of these things line up. In other words, this, this side of the chain is stretched, and so this has to over-rotate in order for um, uh, everything to line up. So what ends up happening is it's, it's firing, basically the, cam, or the crankshaft position sensor is telling it to fire early, um, for, for all the cylinders to fire early, and that's why at the lower RPMs, you know, you have like heavy retardation, basically. And um, when it gets up on a VTEC, it gets a little bit better. Um, but again, you, you, you know, you're not going to pull as much power in VTEC. Um, it, you know, everything's advanced, like the timing's advanced and stuff like that. So it kind of catches up, but it doesn't quite get to its peak performance. So what we're going to see here, you can kind of see it. Um, this is a picture of the block and the timing mark. So there's a white mark here on the pulley, and then there's that triangle here on, on your block, and that should line up when, when your cams and everything are at top dead center. So what we're probably going to see when we look down there is that this thing, this pulley, is going to be over-rotated a little bit more on a, and from a clockwise per position, that means this white mark is going to probably be a little bit further over here. So sure enough, on this one, I don't know if you can see it, but it, you know, that white mark is um, a little bit over rotated from where it's supposed to be. Again, that white mark should be lined up um, with that with the tip of that triangle, which it is not. So that means that the that the chain is um, basically stretched on on this side here and then that crank pulley has to over rotate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the oil pan next in order to see if like we've got a spun bearing or, or damaged, damaged uh, crankshaft area um, because this kind of retardation or the early firing does put a lot of stress on that um, uh, on that lower end, so we got to check there first before uh, we go in and replace the timing chain and you know tensioner and and guides and things like that. All right underneath the car with the oil pan, um, first thing you're going to want to do is remove this cross member here. Um, it's just a couple of I think it's 13. Yeah, there are a couple of 13. Uh, millimeter bolts on each side. Um, pull this down so that you'll have clearance to pull the whole um, oil pan down. Um, for the AC compressor, uh, it's difficult to remove this bracket because it has three bolts, so it's easier to remove these two 13 millimeter bolts here. Um, remove the serpentine belt so it's not pulling on the um, 
air conditioner compressor and you know this whole pan will drop down there are 10 millimeter bolts all along around you know the edges and stuff like that um, and then there's two 13 millimeter bolts here off the bottom of the transmission torque specs on these 13 millimeters probably 20 to 22 uh, pound feet so you know not too much and then they're much lighter on these 10 millimeter bolts they're only I think eight uh, pound feet so um, be careful don't don't over torque these when you're putting them back on uh, there's two dowel pins um, on the you know that that kind of locate this um, oil pan and let's see there are two pry points um, one on this side I know it's difficult to see but it's it's way up here there's a pry point that you can use leverage against this block here the engine uh, block and push it straight down and then on the other side it's a lot more obvious um, there's just two pieces that are kind of separating each other from the block in the uh, in the pan and you just use uh, a pry bar in between that and then you know kind of separate it uh, there's a light amount of gray RTV or Honda Bond silicone um, between the um, oil pan and the block and so you just have to break that in order to lower the oil um, uh, pan down uh, check when you do the drainage of the oil check for debris in the oil um, I'll show you in a second to look for debris inside the oil pan itself uh, to see if anything kind of got destroyed on the bottom end. Here is the oil pan removed. I'm going to have to remove this shield right here, a few 10 millimeter screws in order to get to the bottom of the crankshaft. Here is the oil pan. Fortunately there were no like metal shavings down in this area here which is good. Um, I did find a little 10 millimeter nut so I'll have to find out where that came from but anyway it was at the bottom here but there's no um, there doesn't seem to be any like heavy metal particles down here at the base um, so that's good news so far um, but anyway I'm gonna pull off that cover off the bottom of the engine uh, to expose the crankshaft all right I've, exp um, I've inspected the four rods and you know I um, took a feeler gauge the service limit for the edge let's say uh, between the uh, crank and the um, connecting rod is 0.4 millimeters and on this one it's not there yet it's more like maybe 30.30 uh, uh, millimeters so this one's still in spec from a side to side perspective this one's pretty close though to to 40 um, or to 0 0.40 so uh, in fact it is right around 4, 0.40 so I'm gonna remove the end caps here off this one and this one to inspect these two are pretty tight uh, the first one number one and number four are pretty tight so we'll go ahead and inspect those and see what the bearings look like okay I'm gonna I've got these loosened remember the torque specs on these are 18 pound-feet and I've marked the base with a little bit of a you know like a paint pen here so that you know this one has to go back in for number two and I've already removed number three there um, and I'll show you what the surfaces kind of look like after I get these out so um, you should probably you know when you assemble them uh, let's say with new bearings or if you try to replace the bearings on here while the engine's still in the car you should probably replace these bolts because they do stretch um, you know when they when they go in and um, it's probably best to to replace them 
sorry it's taking so long here but anyway um, I'm gonna be using a plastic gauge to determine the um, the gap and it's a little piece of like thin putty that you put across here and then you put you, you, you tighten up the uh, the you know this this bottom bracket here uh, to spec and then you take it off without you know moving the engine and then you can you can determine what the clearance is um, within there so this one should come out should separate not so easy <laughs> Let's see, hold on. Let me stop the video here for a second. Okay, apologize for delay. The delay here is the bearing. Let's remove that. And you can see it's a, it's a little bit of kind of scoring, but it, it hasn't like worn through, it definitely hasn't spun, you know, because otherwise it would have rotated, but uh, there is some, there's some definite wear here, but you can't, it's very difficult to feel. Um, let me show you the other one. This is the number three. Um, this one looks a lot better. Less, less, uh, you know, less damage per se. So um, I'm gonna plastic gauge these and determine what the clearance is and I'll let you know in a second. Okay this is the bottom of the crank. Journals removed and this is the plastic gauge and you can see after compressing the little red I don't know it's like a putty or something like that um, here you can see it flattened out and then you measure it against the plastic gauge here and this one measures about point about point seven point seven point seven yeah point seven six point seven yeah around there and that one also is about the same so basically it you know both of these are probably Point one, point zero one, um, yeah, point zero one millimeters. Um, maybe too much play or too much clearance. So, um, going to replace the bearings here. So this kind of just pushes up. You can push the piston up here and then rotate the top bearing out. Um, it's relatively easy to do. You just kind of reach around and it will rotate. It will rotate out like this. You can kind of see it coming around here. And this is the bearing. So this one looks just like the bottom one. A um, little bit scored. Uh, but this one would be replaced. And, you know, it's just the reversal. You just kind of slip it up in here. Um, against the against the crank, bring it into position, and then and then bring down the um, bring down the top of the connecting rod, and then just kind of push it into place like this, and then um, get a new one for the bottom, obviously, and then connect it right back up here. It goes to 18 pound-feet and then you go 90 degrees further uh, on the tightening and you'll have to do that basically with a breaker bar especially um, you know if you're using brand new bolts here all right next we're gonna remove the air filter got to undo the clamp here the hose is down here and the whole unit should come right out like that. 
that's going to expose uh, the front of the motor. We're going to have to remove uh, probably the idler pulley to get a little bit of clearance here. Probably not, actually. Um, there's going to be two screws up on top and um, 10 millimeter screws all the way around the front cover. That's what we're going to remove. Got to remove the um, idler pulley here and finally the bottom crank pulley down here. Uh, we'll also remove the three nuts or the three bolts that are on the um, water pump um, pulley so that we can get clearance back here for the rest of the uh, rest of the screws. Here's the front of the motor. have to remove this uh, dampener here. So I've already undone the screws. We're going to move this one out of the way. This one's done and then there's two right here at the very top of the motor. I apologize for the angle, but uh, this is the best I can do as far as holding it in, uh, in this location. So let's see, got to move this one here a little bit. Okay, so this one comes out this way. I'll retrieve the other hardware there in a second. And then the idler pulley is reverse thread. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the belt tensioner pulley. So this is reverse thread. So this comes out with it as if you were tightening it. And I'm going to replace this with a new one, um, you know, when, uh, when I reassemble it. But this is the tensioner pulley. So we'll set that aside. Then down here is the regular idler pulley. This one is with normal thread. So you could just back it out this way. And this removes here. Um, don't forget on the back there is a there is a collar here. Um, so that inserts in the back here. Um, I'll probably also replace this entire pulley. Um, so just don't forget to um, put the collar back on and then and then torque it down. All right, now we kind of have most of the front cover exposed. I'm also going to remove this water pump cover here in order to get to a 10 millimeter bolt right back here um, and then there's a water line that runs across here to cool down the oil filter so that needs to be loosened here at the clamp disconnected water will drip out of here so just make sure you have a pan uh, underneath now I've removed all the 10 millimeter bolts as well as the 214s over here on this side. Um, now the um, crank pulley needs to come off. Um, I'll try to use a weighted 19 millimeter socket. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, may have to use a, a tool to hold the crank pulley in place while I turn it with a, a 19 millimeter um, with a breaker bar. This is how I got the uh, crank pulley off. Uh, used a special tool here and braced it against the frame with a uh, breaker bar. And then I used another breaker bar and actually bent it a little bit. Um, but put it in here with a 19 millimeter impact socket. And then utilized a uh, jack handle uh, in order to pull it. It's going to take about 300 pound feet in order to break this. Um, I put PB Blaster in there and then broke it loose and now I'm able to you know remove remove the bolt. I had to push the radiator forward just a little bit just by undoing the uh, the top mounts on it um, but you know now this piece can come off. It, it does have a a very large washer on it. This is 19 millimeters and it's not real easy to break break loose here but that's what that's what it looks like. And then once you remove this tool here I'll show that to you here in a second. 
this basically holds the um, crank pulley and then you can just pull the crank pulley straight off like this. Um, it does have a key in it. You can see this mark right here. Um, so there's no way to um, have it misaligned. There is a key right here. Uh, I'm kind of pulling it in and out. You can replace that or just keep it in there and then, you know, reassemble this on there, indexing it to that, to that notch. But this is basically the crank pulley. You can see the outer section here where the larger wrench fits in and then the, um, uh, the 19 millimeter bolt goes right in the center there like that. I'm currently lifting the front timing cover away from the engine. There are two pry points for it. One is way down here, lower left corner. Um, use a pry, two pry bars and you'll be able to um, just pop it open there. And then there is one right, sorry, right back here behind the tensioner pulley or where it was. Um, again, you reach two um, pry bars back there where that block is, this rectangular block, and you wedge it against that and the front timing cover will, cover will pop off. Um, so next I'll be removing the cam chain and um, I bought brand new um, guides here so I'll put in a br brand new cam chain and guides. Um, yeah you have to basically take this cover off here and then you'll have access access to remove the chain. So that's that's kinda how that comes off. And um, let's see what we'll do is we'll clean up the the timing cover before we install it and here are the pry bars so one's fairly large and the other one's a little bit smaller but I put them in that position and use the one here on the right to basically you know wedge it out like this and then it just pops the timing chain cover and then this one here is used as just a brace Okay, moving to the VTEC solenoid chain tensioner side of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and remove the VTEC solenoid here. Um, I think the only connection we really have to disconnect is this kind of this lower one. You can actually leave this top one connected if you want. Just take it off the bracket. Um, Okay, I've I've purchased um, a new gasket here that I'll replace on top. So um, we'll do that in a bit when we do the reassembly. And then there are three um, three bolts for the rest of the VTEC solenoid. Another one over here. So again, you know, I've uh, I've purchased um, new get a uh, new seals for the VTEC solenoid here. Um, 
can tell this one's a little bit crusty. So anyway, um, we'll get that going upon reassembly. And then there's uh, three, actually just two, for the ch cam chain uh, tensioner. So these are the main mounting ones. There's two others, but then that holds the piston. So once those come off, the chain tensioner should pull, but it doesn't always because it's kind of sucked in there. Um, what we'll have to do is we'll have, there's a, let's see, I think you can see it. Yeah, there's a bolt, a uh, hex bolt here. Um, this is a inspection port. So loosen this and then stick a screwdriver in there and then you'll be able to kind of just wedge this out and it'll pull out. So this is an eight millimeter Allen. Once you remove it, you just stick a screw, a flat bladed screwdriver in and then you should be able to pull this thing straight out. And that's your, that is your tensioner here. Um, I've purchased a new one, but if you didn't, if you didn't purchase a new one, you'll have to um, take this cover off and then it'll allow the piston to basically um, retract. Um, you'll have to set it um, either with a pin or with a screw here and then insert it and then undo the screw and then the spring action will will obviously you know extend that piston and it'll push against the cam chain tensioner here okay okay next thing we're going to do is remove the cams um the cam covers here the tower covers are numbered um from front to back, one, two, three, four, five. And then they also have directional arrows pointing forward. So you really can't go wrong in reassembling these. Um, and then there's nothing, you know, in between the cam shaft and the and the cover, you know, at all. There's there's really like a bearing surface and that's it. So um, when you put these back together again, uh, just make sure that you have a film of oil, clean oil on the cams and on the, um, on these uh, covers here as you put them down. Uh, to take them off, you know, you're gonna have to use, I think it looks like 14 millimeter, um, but you're gonna have to use a tall or a deep socket um, to get past some of these towers here. Um, but just um, keep track of the bolts because um, these do matter um, where they are located um, and they have slightly different heights to them also, these tall ones. So just keep track of those one, two, three, four, um, and their location. So either shoot a photo, uh, keep them handy, something like that, or you know mark them on a um, cardboard box or something like that um, to keep track. Once you have these off, then the uh, cams just lift off. Um, they're tied into a cog down here that's part of this um, kind of main chain sprocket just behind it. So when we put everything together again, um, we'll go ahead and make sure the two cams are timed. Uh, the two, two um, uh, let's say, marks have to be facing each other exactly and basically level with the, uh, top, of the top of the head. Okay, I just wanted to show you, um, I'm down to the last one. Here's number two and got everything loose. You just pull it out and then again keep the it's probably best to keep the bolts in there like this uh, again these are numbered and so you can just put them down in that order then after that um, the cams basically pull straight out like this and uh, they do have a marking here up on top um, I believe whether it's right or left and uh, this one is the right one. Oh yeah it's actually here R1 so um, when you pull, pull them out just make sure that you place them over on the side and this is R2 
So this is just uh, the left side. And then that's all you have to do up here. Um, next we'll be um, removing, let's see, let me point this down here. Next we'll be removing this with an 8 millimeter um, uh, hex and then uh, we'll be able to move the cam chain back here and then pull out the, uh, the gear. So before I remove the chain I wanted to show you that uh, there is a mark. So on the factory chain it's not painted white, they're actually um, black so they're darker. So you have um, two up here and then down, down at the bottom there's just one of the links that is dark. Um, but anyway, they're like 180 degrees to each other. Um, you'll want to put these kind of at the, at, the, at the mark that's on the sprocket. So anyway, you can see that they are right in between. You peel off the chain here, peel it back like this, and kind of have it clear like that. When this bolt comes out, there's actually an O-ring on here. It's so flat that uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna replace it. But there is a small O-ring that goes around here that keeps oil from, let's say, dripping out. This one didn't have any oil dripping out so much, but um, anyway, once you do that, there is a washer that's right here. So if you want to put a a magnet on it to keep it from dropping down, it doesn't really matter if it drops down because I have that front timing cover off. So you know this is the through bolt that goes through and then you can kind of let's see that's the washer let's take that out put it on there and then you can just pull this out like this and you can actually let the chain drop because um, I've got the cam cover off. So here is the basic sprocket. Um, there is a collar in the back here um, which you can replace if you want. Um, this one doesn't seem like it has a lot of play or wear or anything like that. Um, it's probably fine. I did order a new one so I'm gonna I'm gonna replace this collar um, with a new one. But yeah, that's that's basically how it goes, and then that's the mark right there um, for the chain. So that's the orientation. So what I did to install this is, you know, I still have this this chain loose, but what I did was I lined up the mark here, the white mark, with the two links, the two black links. And then down below here, um, there's a mark on the, on the sprocket here, and then that lines up with the one black link. And once you have that on, um, and you've got it aligned, and then this um, key is um, in line with a tab that's underneath this block, there's a little like um, triangle down there. If those are in line, then, then the crank is at top dead center. Um, once these are aligned, then you go up here and then you can put uh, the bolt as well, you know, as the washer here through and, and, then, and then you can bolt that up. This is the uh, front timing chain cover going to replace it with a factory Honda um, seal here and um, after I cleaned it up you gotta use a micrometer here and measure the depth that it's at right here this is about I think 11 or so um, centimeters and then on the back here the depth of this is about six. So you just kind of want to get it around that area. Um, the seal is going to go in this way um, and it's also going to come out 
you know, by pushing on the back here. I've got kind of a socket that's, a, I think this is like 55 um, millimeters or so. It'll work well on the front here because it, it fits right in. Um, on the back side, um, you can just use a punch and then just punch it out this way. Um, I've also bought a new gasket for right here. Okay, it popped right out and here it is right here. Just use the punch and just one hit and it came out. Now we're going to put in the new one here. So again, this one goes in this way, like that. And um, you're just going to want to put a little bit of assembly lube. So I've got uh, some Molygraph assembly lube here. You can use oil, anything you want like that. But you just want to get a little bit of assembly lube on there. Put it into place. Kind of press it in mostly by, get it started by hand actually. And then um, utilize a socket here and a rubber mallet. And just kind of put it in here like this. And um, after this, you just take a measurement and again, you get it so that it's about 11 or so um, millimeters in depth, which is just about, it's about 10 right now. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll push it in evenly a, a, another centimeter and we should be good to go. Um, and then for assembly, um, per the um, manual, you'll just want to put a light bead of um, RTV gray um, on both sides here. And then don't forget to put in the um, the new ga the new seal, this one here, um, before you assemble it up. You also put a little bit of RTV, again RTV gray. Um, right up here and um, then this just kind of slips up and then goes up um, you know onto the front of the motor and it should seal well. Okay I'm underneath the car again and removing the connecting rod ends here All right, so this is the connecting rod end removed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a plastic gauge with plastic gauge green, because that's within range. And you're gonna slip out the new bearings. They basically rotate out. They should. It's a better shot here. They rotate out like this and you can also push up the piston here and then slip out the rod bearing you can kind of see it slipping out here um, and then you slip in the new ones the new ones are molly clevite um, i don't know if you could see this but it is a cb 1780p is 0.5 millimeter oversize and we're going to go and put those in so they come to you as a pair um, but here's the difference no scoring obviously they're brand new so um, you'll want to slip these into into place
the two bearings are identical. So these are the two halves that come uh, in the package. And you can see that there's a notch on each one. So on the upper connecting rod, as well as the lower part of the connecting rod, there's a little notch right here. You can kind of see it. And that basically fits like this. So it's the same thing when you when you push it up there's a notch over here on this side on the right let's say on the back on the rearward facing side basically of uh, the upper connecting rod so you put a little bit of uh, oil on here or lubricant you know molly lube either one and then slip it up in there and then and then it should work just fine so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that real quick So just a little bit of molly lube on each side. Again, the, the notch is over here. So we're gonna slide the bearing up and around like this, and then pull the top down. And it's seated now. Um, and then on the lower one, this one's kind of already pre-lubricated. It has some lubrication on it. Again, that notch is over on this side, so I'm going to assemble it. Just push it into place like that. So now it's in place. And then we're gonna put a little bit of plastic gauge on the crank journal. So again, this is, this is green plastic gauge. It's about two spec. And uh, I'm just placing a little bit across the bearing. You can barely see it, but it's right there. And then we're going to take a, a quick measurement of its width after, after we torque it down. And I've got it on this one also already. So this again gets assembled up here. And then you've got your old connecting rod bolts. You know, we're going to put in the new ones um, once we verify it's to spec. So you put in your old ones first. Crank those down. Remember, uh, 18 pound feet first. And then you go um, another quarter turn after that. And then that should be uh, tightened down. You take the caps back off again and then measure the width of that um, of that plastic gauge and we'll come right back to that okay here's the plastic gauge and we're measuring it at kind of the widest point here looks like about 0 0.038 millimeters and this one here is a little bit smaller than 0 0.038 it's not quite the zero point the next one down is 0 0.051 so it's a little bit tinier but not quite that that tiny so I would say this one's about a 0 0.04 maybe two or something like that so the spec is 0 0.030 to 0 0.054 so now with the new bearings you know we both got this in spec so that's that's good news um, we'll take some uh, acetone and clean this off do not you know use a wire brush or anything like that because you want to keep that that crank surface nice and smooth and unscratched uh, we'll remove some of this and then we'll assemble it with the new bearing, uh, you know, um, sorry, with the new bearing cap bolts. I bought brand new ones from Honda. Uh, again, 18 pound feet, and then go 90 degrees beyond that. And then that'll be torqued down because these do stretch a little bit. 
Uh, they do stretch a little bit um, when they're in there to, to hold themselves in place. But that's it for, for the bottom end here. And now I'm going to go back over to the timing chain side. We're going to try to replace pretty much everything that touches the new chain, this chain here. Um, so we're going to start with the uh, cog or sprocket down here. This is it, 13620PCX004. Um, this is it. It has a key on it right here. So that'll go right over this key um, when we put it on. And it also has a mark. I don't know if you could see it. A mark right here, a punch. Um, and that's where the center, well, the link here um, that's darkened underneath will align to. So right now it's aligned to the old one. So I'm just basically replacing this with this. Um, the thought here is the uh, teeth here might have worn just a bit as well as the top sprocket and therefore um, that provides the chain with more effective length. So what I'm going to do is first remove the uh, oil pump chain tensioner. It's 12 millimeter up top and 10 millimeter at the bottom. So the tensioner will come straight out like this. And then the, I have a new Woodruff key in here. So you just kind of pull on this and you can actually move the, should be able to move the chain off of this. Such that, uh, Yeah. That didn't work. Okay, the chain tensioner comes off like this basically, and I had to drop the oil pump. Um, basically, it's three bolts, two 12s, and one 10, and it drops straight. It drops straight down. When you drop it, it'll um, it'll come off the lower sprocket or the sprocket to the oil pump itself, and then you can just pull this. The Woodruff key is going to come out with it, but anyway, you can just pull this off and then replace it. Replace it basically with the new one. Okay, I've draped the chain onto the new one, put a little bit of molly lube both on the uh, cogs as well as in the center. Um, this is just assembly lube. You can use, um, uh, you can use uh, engine oil also. And uh, it'll be a much tighter fit, I suspect, because there's uh, different tolerances for a new part. So it's going to need a little bit more lube on here. We'll assemble some on here also. Okay.
in there. That's it with the Woodruff key in there. Now I'm going to put the uh, oil pump on from underneath. Okay, this is everything assembled. The oil pump is back on down here. Um, and then I put in the chain tensioner here for the oil pump and also connected up the chain to the, um, the timing chain here to the right point on the cog. So that's all set up now um, at the bottom end. Consistent with changing everything that touches the timing chain, this is the old camshaft sprocket um, that is that I removed. This is the bushing in the back. So what I did was I purchased everything um, brand new. Brand new bushing here. Um, and then we have the cam chain sprocket and the cam gear. These will be bolted together like this. And I bought uh, brand new bolts also. These are torqued to 10 pound feet. And I'll put a little bit of thread locker on there also. Here's the completed one and then here's the old one. Uh, there is when you put the two gears together, these two gears together, you can tell that there is some wear on the tops of the gear here for the cam chain. So it was nice that um, I was able to replace this. It will take up those to extra tolerances uh, and um, provide you know much more accurate uh, timing. I'm going to put a little um, marking paint here on the points just like uh, on the old one as well as at the uh, um, top of the timing chain mark also. Here's the final assembly of the timing chain. You have the uh, index here and there is a small triangle that's on the block right underneath this rib and that has to line up with the key here from a rotation standpoint. Then next, the chain goes on. Um, there's one black link here, and then there's two black links um, at the top. That black link at the bottom lines up with a kind of a dot that's on the uh, oil chain sprocket. Um, and once you line that up, you put the chain on, and then you come to the upper portion here. Sorry for moving the camera, but this will be, you put the bolt in, make sure you have the washer here. Um, I usually use a magnet to suspend it and then put the bolt through. Make sure that the timing marks on the sprocket are lined up with the plane of the head. and. You've got two black links on the chain here, and they just have to be right in the center um, with the dot or the mark that I made um, on the sprocket. And all of this should line up such that when the tensioner is put into motion here, everything still lines up. The chain is tight, and then, and then these two marks here line up at the head. And then you can go ahead and put in the camshafts. Forgot to mention that this bolt gets torqued down to 36 pound feet. Then, uh, when you're installing the camshafts, put a little bit of Molly or assembly lube here or engine oil in the on the bottom uh, journals. And then, what you want to do is there are marks on the cam uh, sprockets and they have to basically match or you know point towards each other here when you're assembling it on. So I like to drop in the back here first and then kind of adjust it so that it is pretty close up front. You can check that as far as putting some you know 
artificial tension on the chain. Make sure this is lined up here across the head and that these two points are pointing at each other. Then you can go ahead and drop in the um, the tops here. Um, put a little bit of Molly Lube again up on top of each one. I'll do so in a second, but I'm just showing you how they kind of go in. Uh, these are torqued to 16 pound feet and you start from the center and work outwards. Then you do the four centers here and then you know in a, in a crisscross pattern and then you do the outer ones in a crisscross pattern and then again you do the centers here in a crisscross pattern and then you do the outer ones in a crisscross pattern so you're working from the center outwards and again it is it's only 16 pound feet the camshaft caps have arrows indicating forward and they're also labeled one, two, three, four, five. Um, you really can't mix them up. You just have to make sure that the towers here, they are of different lengths in order to, um, you know, bolt down the uh, valve cover. But again, um, these lines or these points line up with the top of the head. And then these two points here uh, from the left and right camshafts basically point at each other. These are torqued down to 16 pound feet and put a note on it that you're going to have to adjust the valves because I loosened all the valves in order to remove these first but uh, you're going to have to adjust the valves you know obviously before you you run the car so just put a note on that uh, to get that to that a little bit later. Next we're going to move to um, putting on the front um, timing chain cover as well as the oil pan. I'm going to put the timing chain tensioner, here it is, 14510 PCX005. I'm going to put the brand new timing chain tensioner in while the front cover is off so we can see it actuate. You want to rotate it so that the there's a kind of like a, a pin here that you can pull out once you remove this cover here you'll see that pin through there and then you just pull it out with a pair of needle nose pliers and the um, the piston here will extend and then go against the um, chiming chain tensioner So you can use a little bit of assembly lube and then just put it into place like this. Get it past the O-rings that are in there. It should kind of snap into place like that. And then put in the new bolts here. These are only 10 millimeters so you just torque them to 8.7 or so maybe 9 pound-feet and then we'll remove this cover here and pull out the pin. Next will be the timing chain cover here and it's gonna be about nine of these longer bolts the 10 millimeter ones that go here here and here and then there's um, a couple of these larger ones will go up here. Actually, there's three in total one, two, and three here. I was able to get from bellmetric.com some new bolts here. These are the tens, and I was able to get uh, some of the larger ones here. Again, bellmetric.com had these in stock, and they were relatively inexpensive. Okay, so on the cover I uh, put in the um, the new seal here for the uh, crankshaft, set it to the right depth. On the back there's going to be a small 
o-ring that goes here this is just a water channel that ba basically dead ends um, and so I'll put a little bit of um, assembly lube in there and then attack you know put the o-ring on this side so that it basically sticks in there then what you're gonna want to do is put RTV gray just on the inside here uh, so going around the inside of the holes um, and just put a light amount uh, because you're just trying to get the surface basically flat or take up any of the gaps you don't need to put any of the uh, gasket material or RTV gray around here because that'll have an o-ring and then you just make sure that the the dowels are in place there's two of them down here at the bottom and you just kind of put it up into place and then press it on and once the dowels locate here it should it should press straight on thin layer of ultra gray gasket is in place there's also a small amount on this piece here and the new gasket is located here again no um, ultra gray gasket needed for this piece right here I've pulled the oil cooler pipe away here and then you just kind of want to move this pipe away also and then line up everything in place it's going to be a little bit of ultra gasket getting in and make sure you have the dowels lined up and then push forward and it should go into place like that once it grabs the dowels down below and then you have about five minutes or so maybe seven minutes um, and then once this is pushed in then put in the put in the vault various bolts the small bolts smaller bolts the 10 millimeter ones going at 8.7 uh, pound feet and then the I think there's three larger ones here that are going in at 33 pound feet. Here is the oil pan, and I have a dowel already in on the engine right here. There's a dowel that was put in over here, and there's ultra great gasket maker like all the way around on the inside of the each of the bolt holes here and um, there's 17 bolts that are the same size and then only the three back here are the longest this one this one and this one and then there's one right here in the front that is medium sized but everything else is the same length so it's pretty easy to um, put back on um, locate it with the dowels push it straight up and then put in put in your bolts and they're all 10 millimeter tighten them to um, 8.7 pound feet and then there are I think two or three bolts that go in here um, that are much larger and those are I think torqued at 58 pound feet um, but they're you know like the regular transmission bolts um, but do these first and then uh, bolt in the two that are um, uh, coming in from the transmission when putting up the oil pan, make sure you tap it with a one pound or a two pound mallet um, once the dowels are in place. And then you can, it'll, it'll stay in place in order for you to put in all the, all the bolts here, all the way around. And uh, don't forget to hook up your air conditioning compressor with the uh, two bolts, the two long ones here, and then put in the cross member and then you should be done down here uh, don't forget to put in the oil pan plug 
But after that, uh, we'll move up to the engine to do the harmonic balancer install. Next is the harmonic balancer. This is the unit here. You notice this has this uh, large opening, which yeah. Next, going to install the harmonic balancer. You can see there's a pretty big opening here. There is a key slot here, and you know when you're tightening it, you got to counterbalance it with this special tool, and then the um, the bolt itself. I ended up buying a new one. 90017 PCX 13. It is a 19 millimeter bolt, and you'll want to lubricate the threads and then just right in this gap here. Um, that's what the manual calls for. And then you know you tighten it up to 180 181 pound feet. So Here's the harmonic balancer going in. Again, finding the key and then installing it. Like that. And then you install the bolt after getting it lubricated. Now I did want to point out that with the cams and everything lined up, the chain tensioned, the timing mark is right on right on the mark here. Remember that earlier this um, harmonic balancer was or this crankshaft pulley was basically rotated a little bit too far. Um, it was about five degrees off and you know that was the problem the chain was stretched but now with the new chain and chain components everything is is dialed in perfectly next we've got our um, regular idler pulley that goes right here um, I decided to pick up a new one here is the the old unit basically it consists of you know a bolt cover, washer, that kind of thing. And on the back side, there is a collar. Um, and so it's this piece here. What I've done is uh, I noticed that when this is on there, it is a bit loose. So I ordered a new, a new pulley as well as a new collar on the back. So here's the new pulley. 31190 PCX000 um, and then also the collar itself. The collar is a 38944 P02000. So I'm going to replace both of those. The idler pulley is torqued down to 33 pound feet right here. Smooth operation and I also put on the water pump pulley. These are at 10 pound feet. Next is the idler uh, for the belt. And this is the old one. Um, it was, it's a little rattly. You can kind of hear it a little bit. But anyway, it's, um, the bearing was kind of old. So um, I ordered a brand new one. And this here, it's um, 31180 PCX003 and this is the new unit that we're going to install. It's the same thing. This goes on 33 um, pound-feet of torque. All right, all the front components are on. Remember this is a reverse thread here um, and then you can go ahead and put on the belt, adjust the valves and put on you know the air cleaner and the breast. Valve cover is on, oil is filled up with five quarts, and now we're ready to start.